Greetings, massive blessed love. Lady B here again once again for you guys. You know how it is. You know what's going down. I'm here with another very special guest, you guys. All the way from Belize. Okay, y'all see me right? It's going down. I want you guys <laughs> I want you guys help me welcome to the Music Link, Link platform. Not only reggae, but recording artists. Jamirko. Yes. <laughs> give thanks. Give thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise. I'm pleased to be here. And this moment is one that, you know, I was anticipating. So I'm very grateful for being here. Give yes, I uh, thank you so much. Okay, so let's start with um Jamirko. This I like the spelling because you showed trick me. Because you know when you you know how stuff is normally spelled when you see you just read it right away. I was like, no, this may be having some trickery to it. It might be something else. And I was like, nope, Jamaica. Yeah. So where did the name come from? Well, the name comes from a a very serious critical moment in my life when I was young, five years old. Um, I had a very severe accident, um, one which almost took my life. I was in a coma for quite a period of time, um, a back bumper of a truck. This is something I probably express quite a few times to ones because they all want to know where you get this name from. Yeah, this name it's from. a serious name, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, a black bumper of a truck when I was five years old hit me, um, split open my skull. Make a long story short, I was in coma for a while and, you know, um, everybody thought I wouldn't make it or most. Even those who had very strong faith, you know, was at that brink, you know, thinking that I wouldn't make it. And uh, just when I was going to be plugged off, life support out. Mm. Job miracle happened. Yeah. And my godmother at the time was the one who actually shouted that it was a miracle. And, you know, from oh. then forth, as go along in life, you know, I was called Urkel. I used to play basketball and then they started calling me the oracle and it's something that i think was significant to my existence now yeah. and you know it's for a purpose so i kept the name you know jam miracle yeah yeah man so it, that's like it starts your walk right away true truly right yeah. away because you can especially when you have age to understand what happened to you and you have to say that's nothing but a miracle truly you know and you know like i said some of us are in place for a reason and are saved by his grace and mercy for a reason. So we're here for that purpose and to serve it fully. Okay, so now I can say that you're a Rasta man, right? Truly. Okay, so Rasta faith, is that, does it run in your family or is it? Yes, I do stand firmly on this because what one thing we must all recognize is that Ras means head. Head as leaders and we as a, a people are already ras from birth. Mm -hmm. As we come out the womb, we are leaders from birth. We are melanated people with plenty of potencies, plenty of potentials, and we are leaders. So, whereas certain things that I am very aligned to now in this time, live in this liberty, I cannot say that is the same for those of some of my elders. Okay. Um, I have strict diet, I have strict ways of, you know, carrying myself um, where, you know, vegan is concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, I only ask it. that question to say from when you go into John Miracle that, you know, the whole, it, it, it's you, I see it right now. Truly. So to fall all the way in there, I was trying to see if you had other people who, who influences around you or did you go there on your own? Mm -hmm. on your own? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, like I say, it's from birth, though. It's an invert concept, mm -hmm. which is just naturally in us. But I had, you know, ones in my family that also lived the liberty. Okay. And ones before them who also would claim Rasta and live a certain liberty in that light as well. Okay. Yeah. That's all I want to know. So, okay, now, as far as um, the music go, now... So you got Job Miracle running, running with the name. Now, where did the music come in? Like, what age? This, again, again, is a, a, a from birth. Okay. Um, my father was a musician. Okay. Um, he used to reside in this part of town as well, um, in California here. His 
you know, former name, they used to call him Isaac, he is Bernard Gabbard. Um, he used to play for the Vibrations and Melody Swingers back in Belize in the older days. So mm -hmm. it's something that is in the genetics, you okay. know, so it's, it cannot depart from my heart. Okay, so what's some of your musical influences? Well, to originally speak of my father, he is the original. And okay. then as we go along in this liberty more and coming out of, you know, the Mesopotamia era in Belize in those eras that face poverty a lot, we turned to a revolutionary song which came out of Jamaica. And the force fields or the, the powerhouses that was pushing that music at the time was you know, people like Sizzla Kalanji, mm -hmm. Capleton, mm -hmm. um, some of the elders too, as well as Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, you know, mm -hmm. these influences are heavily laden in the Caribbean, so. I love when that, that era of the conscious music, when it was running, it, I, I just, I'm so happy that I experienced the time when it was out hot and True. pushing, and that was the dance hall, True. you know, because when you go there, it would be like the music would speak to you, and enlighten you or change your thinking from negative to positive be like why would you think negative when you walking still if you you can walk you get positivity on you true you're breathing you, you're living in poverty so how you you know what i mean exactly so um yeah i love that time so okay so those musics that are what influenced you now what happened to where you got the connection where you feel like you can be an artist Again, um, going through school at the time, we were a people that embraced the choir. Um, in Grace Primary School particularly, um, Miss Edwards, Gloria Edwards at the time, she was a person that highly, you know, had influence in music and made us participate in many different festivities, festivals, um, as, as, as a school. So you was in the choir, that's what he's saying, you guys. <laughs> Truly, uh, at a young age, you know, um, we, we had that experience and we learned a thing. Yeah, we need to know our, our skills. Uh, you know. Holding it. Okay, then. So, you, so know. you got that back behind the scene of the thing, you know, because there's a lot of people just naturally just start singing and just, you know, by ear and seeing what they know. So you got True. Kind of the yeah. real behind the scenes. We got a, a, a hands-on yeah, okay. education about it. You know, it's yeah. different because it does go a long way. It does open doors for other things when you can Truly. read music. Exactly. You can't. It does. It's yeah. so crazy. Truly. But it opens the doors. So, okay, so even with all that singing, did you start singing at home, like, without the choir now? You <laughs> singing along with your favorite songs? Truly, truly. Um, my grandmother was a was a was a Christian woman who who heavily you know loved to sing in the house, okay. and she's always singing, always giving praises in her form, and I think this also gave me the amplitude of courage, even when I was in high school, because high school I started to do more like you know outward singing, like doing a little performance, yeah. you know, clowning, fooling around as they may call it, you know. We did have a little chance in the previous school, which was Grace Primary, like I said, to deliver the effort as well through the talent. So, yeah, I think Grandma have a heavy influence okay. on, on that. Because then well. she sing with no apology, comfortable, just out, yeah, just exactly. sharing, <laughs> so give you that energy. So, when when you first was able to perform something like, um, were you like like really complete something? It was in a group. Uh, like I said, the choir was the one choir. of the main place we started and we were doing festivals around, like they used to have Bliss Institute festivals and we used to have to go sing the anthem. We actually sang the anthem for the Queen one time too when she came to Belize wow. back in the day. So we, we had to perform as a group at as that group. point. Other places, I also found myself like doing small commercials while we were growing. Uh, uh, a couple of my brethren and I, I had to do. Okay. Yeah, so we, we do a little few things wrong about uh, Belize at the time. Okay, so what time was it when the, your signature of you stepped out? Like when you found your voice? Truly, um, this was way later on, I should say, um, after graduating from the University of Belize. Like I said, it was there, but to really go into professionally or actually attempting to do professional recording or going into studio came at a later time all the way down like 2002, 
you know, uh, 2003. And then we were, like I said, my cousin was a Rasta too before me, Isa Char, Ras Sherman. And um, he had those connections to go to studio and things. So I would find myself with him at times in New York at the time. Oh, all the way to New York? Yeah, New well, York? New York is the place I really based at, at the time. My okay, so how old were you when you went to New York? Um, doing the music, actually, about, I would say, 20, 22, 20, something like that, wrong about that, it was 22. Okay. And then you were able to record, like that was, in New York is where you had your first recording? Yes, exactly, in New York. I did recordings, like, which was not professional way before it, because I was traveling long before that, but it was just amateur work. Okay. But when really getting into that more, you know, structure work and delivering the music was in that time around 2003, 2002. Okay, but did you write your own songs that time, or were you, yeah. Yes. Precisely. My yeah. first song that I, that I wrote um, and sung at that time, I was complimented heavily by my, my, my brother, like I said, Isa Char, who was Just before like, me. What boy you going, we get it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he, he really gave me that encouragement, like, you, you really could do this. You really, you got it. it. You did got you it. start with a freestyle or did you write some stuff first? Like... Well, I'm a, I'm a person that goes off like the tones, like we say, uh, hey, yo, I deal with humming a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I hear a rhythm, I more would hum a thing and then words may come, then I may write that afterwards. Okay, okay. Yeah. So with you in school and learning all of that, like um, for your own thing, like when you started writing, you use those tools right away or how did you start off doing it? Like just like singing stuff out or did you make sure that you was in the... Yes, yeah, starting, I, I did write plenty of my stuff. I write songs that are not even sung yet. Mm -hmm. okay. I still have books with quite a few songs that I've not even sung yet because I was just, you know, having the vision of what I want to express. Uh -huh. And at the time, sometimes we don't have the rhythm or the recording studio, so right. just want to get that expression out. Right. And master the art of writing was something that I did also in high school in poetry or in literature. So to do it in the field where my heart was comfortable and a rhythm was a little bit soothing and easy for me to deliver. So I actually wrote my, I would say like the first hundred songs. But down the line, <laughs> down the line as I went along and I molded myself and grew more confident in the work, Half of the albums, or more than half the albums that are available right now, I, I never had to use a pen. And I brought it out from the head. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because of the energy and the, the meaningfulness to the heart that gives me the ability to deliver like that. So, when, when did you know what music you wanted to sing? Like, when did you know what was going to be your thing? Well, honestly... <clears throat> I'm a person that speaks on behalf of the people, and the reggae culture music, as they may call it reggae, mm -hmm. I prefer to call it roots and culture, mm -hmm. um, is that pivoting music that speaks globally for the people, mm -hmm. on behalf of the people, right, and right. represent the people. Right, right, right. You know, there's other genres out there as well, but it is not so much revolutionary. So. Being a person that comes from the Lee's Mesopotamia era and felt many hardship and, like I said, influenced by iconic artists such as Sizzla, Capleton, Peter Tash, Bob Marley, you know, it, it, it brought forth that energy to I and that recognition to know that this is what I am about and this is what I'm going to stand for. Mm -hmm. So... We took it from there and keep speaking for the people to educate the people because the music is really supposed to be a vehicle, a vessel to uplift, right. inspire, and educate or encourage the people for betterment. So that's my stance. Um, so what was your first song? What, what was the what? first song that you was like, yes? Well, the first song, if I may say that really, <laughs> that really... It is one of the songs then that really gave me that push um, to say I'm going to go full fledged in it. Um, is a song that is, was not even an official release. It's called Who. It says, Who sit in the throne of Ethiopia? Who sit in the throne of this Ababa? 
Ooh. You asked the question. Yeah, huh? I said you asked the question. Exactly. And this is the thing about music. It should be a dialogue. Mm -hmm. It should be a conversation with the listener. Right. It should be something where you're educating you. Where you have it to and fro and they could feel it. So who, uh, although it was unofficially released, was that particular track that brought forth that ambience and tell me like internally said to me like yeah this is this is it keep going keep doing this and focus on delivering the word in this manner okay with, with you wanting to do the music um i guess you said your cousin isa john i guess he was that door into doing professional music truly because as a person who want to do professional music like they feel it what are some of the steps that you think uh, that a person should take you know well, first of all, <clears throat> the music industry is a, a serious thing. It's not just, it's a business merely today. Right. And um, I think that creates a lot of differences when you're going about doing this thing. If you don't want to waste your time or waste your energy, you've got to make sure you have your cards laid out right. Make sure you're ready. Vocally, you have to be equipped to deliver just the vocals to grab the attention and then now with this talent and with the ability to deliver a song you have to find the right companies or the right ones who see your talent and want to give you the opportunity to record the music you know um, sometimes we might approach it in a different manner and expect great results um, but we have to really consider how we put our foot into this thing because for many or for most it's more business mm -hmm. and when you turn on the equipment there's current burning mm -hmm. when you this it's, it's <laughs> money spending right away you know what i mean yeah. so even if you may be a wealthy person just want to do it because you love it and have the ability to expend these expenditures into the music you still have to recognize that there's a balance that is needed. True. So I encourage all ones right now who are aspiring or inspired to go forward with this word or this um, music to let it be substantial. Don't do it just because you're trying to seek some money. You know, be more real with yourself. And by being such, I think, or I'm certain that the Almighty will see you through the right gates and the right doors for your right. exposures. He'll set it up right. Yeah. Okay, so your first actual performance. I don't know if I want to ask you what was your first actual performance where you completed your song or if I want to ask you the first performance that you did when you were so satisfied with your, your performance. Well, on a professional sta stage, I would say back in um, New York City, um, Belize Park Fest, um, Buddy Brown um, at the time used to promote that show in um, Brooklyn itself. The year, to rewind to the particular year, I cannot really identify it. <laughs> Might be around 95, I mean 2005, more or less, somewhere around there. But, um, I had never touched a stage on that level before, a lot and, of people. <laughs> and you know when you when you're you're entering an arena where you know you have the talent, there's no doubt there's still flutters and butterflies That's that true. travel through. Every every this, anybody who's performing, they say right before there's something that comes right there. It depends; it might not stay long, but it's something yeah. that just shows up. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> have to have the ability to control it. Yes, to to deliver the word. And that particular day, I did a wonderful delivery. I mean, based upon the, the, the critics that I got from the observers, and they really felt it. And when I had the chance to revisit the video and see what I did from you know the other side, I was yeah. quite pleased with that performance. Very, very pleased with that. So that also was a moment that told me, yeah, I'm, I'm for this, you know. Yeah. Yes, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear about. Truly. Like, 
when you that first performance and you do everything and it just show you to say yeah because it as much as we are giving to the people you're also giving to yourself exactly so i wanted to know about when you got that exactly you know and that is very needed the confidence uh that satisfaction yeah. in your work and the confidence builds thereafter for mm -hmm. you to go forward so it's very important you know to identify these milestones Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. I, I love all of that. I love it all. And and at times when when you're performing and you look down and you see somebody really taking in what you're saying, enjoying it. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of it now because you know you have the listener ear. The yeah. listener it's ear. not just yeah. like you are there doing some work and nobody is paying attention or attentive. Yeah. The listening ear. That was the shows I really love when people are coming out and like I had a, another artist friend I used to be working with. I was like. He was a little nervous. I said, don't worry, because this is a show where it's different when you're trying to make people pay attention to you. This show that we promoted and it was going down, they know that it's going to be listening. Sure. They're coming because they know this is going to be these kind of performances. So they're coming sure. with listening ears. So you ain't got to be worried about putting them in already. Because exactly. the ones who show up, they're coming for this. Exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Um, after that, that show, did you, I mean... When you did that show, did you already have songs recorded already and that you have put out? Yeah, the time um, being the fact that, you know, that was between 2002 and 2005. I was in a studio working um, with a brother of mine called The Element, mm -hmm. um, a brethren of mine called The Element. And we were recording um, quite a few songs and quite constantly. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it was a burning fire, a raging fire. And I don't think even the producer was able to keep up with my energy. And he was great. He did a great job. But I was so hungry for doing this work and passionate coming. about it. At a certain point, it was too much for him. He, he and I still had good connection, but he couldn't take on the load. And, you know, the consistency, you know, because it's a burning passion for me. I have you know. always had this big old voice because even your speaking voice is so deep. And True. when I heard your voice, was just... It's really big. Truly, truly, truly. I give thanks. I mean, it's by nature's law. My father, like I said, Bernard Garbutt Town, he himself was a big voice person, you know. That's a blessing right there, because people true. work hard to throw their voice, and you have, it's there, you just got to be, you got to just control it. And truly, it. truly, truly. And that's, that's the key thing, thing, controlling it, learning yeah. to maintain control, because sometimes... The ambience and the energy is there. You might sometimes peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're going I mean, too just, hard. You go, ah, and everybody, whoa, because yeah. you have a big voice. Truly, truly. Uh, <laughs> so, um, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm so stuck on this. I'm <laughs> listening to your voice, like from the the music that I heard. I just kept saying, dang, his voice is so big. Like, truly, it's really big. Like, I'm just thinking about how even like. If you were singing like a little slow stuff, you really have to force yourself to bring it to a place where truly you'll be working to from the song. I mean, from the beginning to the end of the song, because your voice is so big. But that's great right there if you're able to control it that good. Precisely. I had another friend who had a big old voice, and he can control it. And we'll be saying, as soon as you start, you'll be like, whoa. But we'll be like, yeah, he doesn't know what to do with that. Because we would hear it like, his voice is so big, it could be so bomb if he knew how to, you know, finesse it in a way. Truly. You know. So, okay, um, after that, like, what was, um, how many songs was your first album, actually, that you, you know, that you really completed? My first album <coughs> um, was entitled, I mean, titled um, Hamadem Hum, Down. It was more, at that time, on the dance hall delivery, yet still, you know, the culture music intertwined in there. It had like 19 tracks. Um, that was the first album. I, I, when I finished that one, I, I thought it over and I said I could have split that one into two, two. albums. But How many songs do you have on there? On the, on the album? Yeah. 19. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there was 19, 19. tracks. Okay. So, that was a lot of work. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. When I was... <laughs> When I just started to do professional recording in the studio, I was with this ball of energy, and there was so much songs that didn't even come out. And that's what, even see right now, the songs that you got on there, I was saying a friend of mine said he has some nice songs, he's reaching for the new song. 
in, in the songs we have, he has like at least five or six good, good songs. If your song has not blew up across the world and everybody's singing every word to it, don't leave them. No. Don't leave them. I'd be like, go back and revamp and keep singing them. Continue. If you keep pushing and pushing, especially if they're great songs and they're singing them and their message is right, you know, until the world, everybody connect with it. Don't leave those songs. No, you can't. Because yeah. there's, a, there's still a lot of people yet to connect with it. Yeah, the and message is there. It's your work, so you can't leave it. I mean, if you're looking for riches and fortune, you're gonna be keep look, you will be looking for a while. You'll be looking, looking, searching, but do this from your heart passionately. The blessings will and come. Realize your ability and do it for a purpose. That's something I got from you. Um, I'm, I'm sharing that that um, that positive energy. And I just, that the outlook, your outlook on everything is positive with the big P. Truly. And I was like, wow. Like, with you living your life that way and, you know, actually um, having that in the music, do you think you, someplace in there that you're not uh, getting where you might want to be if you were different? Um, <clears throat> honestly, when I was singing certain music, I was getting far away different attention and the ability to fly off in different places. But what I realized as a father of chil of several children that we have obligated duty and we must know what can also influence and affect our children mm -hmm. in a way that we might not like. So there comes a point when you must pinch that screen, pull yourself back, mm -hmm. and do what is absolutely right, right, and not just what is good. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you do things that is good, or you think that is good, mm -hmm. and it's not really right or the right path. And many ones in this industry, and I'm not to point at any particular, but many ones in this industry create music of destruction mm -hmm. for the money. Right. or for the exposure right. and I prefer to keep it righteous and let the blessings of the Almighty flow in as right. a, in accordance right. and bring what the people need rather than what they may think they want right. you know because there's something about each human or each individual knowledge it's a heightening thing it's 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 a part of everyone need and drive and you know we know that yeah we know that of course and being aware of this if we're not distracted with all the rest of stuff that is you know out there bombarding us we would seek onto that and those messages will now get the push in the world right but because there's this tug and war with the negative forces and what is sold highly for destruction or to create, you know, devils. I, what, what I look at it is like the future is the children. And if you can bring a music that influence them in a negative way, then you're destroying the future. That's so right. if we can hold on to this thing in this tug of war between good and evil, it's in, in every sector of the world. Good and evil is there everywhere. In the music industry, you have negative music that is propelled more for the people and to hear more because it will turn them on the wrong path. It will send our children to right. jail. It will have them killing each other. It will have men disrespecting women, women disrespecting men. I, know, I didn't even know it was that deep until I saw um, a clip for it. It was an American show and it was talking about like in the hip hop world, how they had had a meeting when they had all the conscious artists that was blowing up at one time with these record labels and it was telling them to stop promoting those music. Tone that down. To tone it down. And bring negative subsets. Ne now, these were different artists, all these years, they didn't talk about this, but it was like three different artists who was actually there, and it was talking about the record labels, and like one of the guys, that they just got up and they had walked out because they couldn't believe it. Yeah. And the ones that had stayed, you know, I guess young and, you know, Black people, I would say, in that time, as far as the music, we was just being able to give money, 
exactly. buy things. So I guess maybe they didn't know what to do. They like, you can still have things, but just follow what we say. And they didn't want to be poor, you exactly. know? So I guess they went on with it. And now to look back, you know, to see the longevity of what they went along with to what it did. To where it's at today now. So they where it's at today. Yeah, that now we see the thing go farther than what we would even think. Yeah. It just corrupted people. It's crazy. Like, it's all manner. And all because that, it was a very positive time, you know, like it was strengthening us. They let us see that musical medicine, you know. Truly. The musical medicine, Roy, when it start working, it's very strong. It's a healing. Yeah. And it bring people to reality. It brings people together. It brings unity. Mm -hmm. And to pull apart, to destroy, to, you know, create chaos. They say, and even the Bible say, you know, Lucifer was a chief musician, was a chief musician, was a chief musician. And in the spiral downward spin, he was cast out of Zion. So this is the same play that is playing here. Zion is here. It's going on right now. This is the battle between good and evil. So, you know, this is going on right now. The chief musicians are in that avenue of demonic dis delivery or mm -hmm. destructive delivery mm -hmm. and most of the most of not all the big world renowned artists they're in a place where part, they're thinking about their pockets and their money and all these things yet they know that they can bring more mm -hmm. to the table but because that might not sell out a million sales they will not indulge in that they will sing what is working with the community based upon the promoters and this is where we are faulty as a leading people as a people who are supposed to lead as elders who know what is right we're faulty there and we'll have consequences for these that will fall on our children i mean when i say this i mean generally we right, right. but there's few of us that see the need to make this change but it's a general impact yeah. With with you knowing all of that, um, and your walk with your music, what make you stay so firm? Like <coughs> it's needed. I mean, I, like I said, good shall always over be over evil. So I cannot find myself like what is the the the, the con when you have a conscience. I sing a song and I will be outrightly real. I sing a song or a few songs in the past that it didn't degrade women mm -hmm. but it was aggressive in that manner mm -hmm. in a sense it it, it it was good songs like i said that everything that is good is right right but it was good songs that was not the message that i think i would want my hear, my children to hear okay. and to even dance to when i started to think about it but because the talent is there to deliver work and, you know, sometimes we sing through our own experiences. True, true, true. Um, we deliver things that we t take a look back on and say, you know what? I don't even want to play this. I want to pull this off the, 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 the media, the streams. I want to pull it back because I know this is not something I would want my children to listen to. Right. However, in the dance hall or in the music industry, the people would love it. They're waiting. <laughs> exactly. And... That's the thing that I cannot follow, you know, the thing that will destroy or, you know, have people wilding out consciously. I cannot, you know, endorse it or endorse it. You know, even though a lot of people um, that's doing the music that's not the mainstream right now, even though you're not doing it and you're not gaining those likes and those riches or whatever, the peace that you gain from doing something positive so much greater, night. you know. Yeah. It's so much greater, and you know, I'm talking to you, you know, you know, for us to share. But I, these are my same thinking. So, like, when it comes to the music and the being positive and, and, and looking for great stuff and just being happy in the moment and livelihood, you know, living in earth, just those things right there. Without the if without the money, with the money, these people don't even walk with that where they should. We would think. True. They would have all that too if you got the money. 
You should have more than me. Exactly. But they don't. Exactly. There's a lack there's a lack of a lot of the essential thing that makes a person whole. Mm -hmm. And like we say, you know, it's the root. The, the love for the money. Because the money is material and it will always be there. Just like stones, rocks, even if it's not called paper money. It'll be some type of, you know, commerce some mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere, trading, whatever, even if it's a chair, it's still what we would consider to be the money. But the love mm -hmm. for vanity, mm -hmm. which the money comes under that canopy, the love for vanity, the love for these things, create that devastation, create that drive and that greed, that chaos. Right. And we need to put a halt to that because our natural resources or human resources are much more valuable than these material things that can yeah, fade away yeah. or unity yeah. or love for each other mm -hmm. or respect for each other mm -hmm. integrity dignity and these things has a higher place value yeah in the place value system yeah. <laughs> so as far as um videos i've seen you had a couple of videos now like how many have you actually did music videos uh maybe totally <clears throat> out there you may be able to to find at least seven or eight um, official videos. Currently, we have like about seven more that is in the works that I've already shoot. I have three videos that I did in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, those will be coming out throughout this year. Um, it's about seven more videos to come, honestly. Okay, uh, so is this all independent or? Yes. Like Yes, so from yes. the beginning, it's been independent for you. Yes, yes. Okay. I prefer that way because, like I said, the industry wants you to do this and do that. Right. And then when you sign a piece of paper, then you're obligated to do this and do but that. But now you see everybody even doing that, a lot of stuff on their own now. Is this a need? Yeah. Don't it's have that control. And then most of the times you sign up with people or these so-called industries, um, producers um, and not even half of whatever the earnings are come back to you yeah, so if it's for the earnings you have to be wise about how you're going to go about it because you'll sell out your soul your integrity your dignity and then at the end of the day that money that you're apparently supposed to have is not even yours to possess so like you see this time of some of our elder um Artists are veterans now that had great songs, and we're trying to see how to take care of them, you know? Exactly. This it's, is what it leads to. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, They've been robbed. Mm -hmm. the robbed of their livelihood, robbed of their integrity, dignity, and all this. Even with right now, with them knowing, they're still not setting up something for them. All of the artists that came behind him, them that have, you know, uh, even sampled their music who know what's what, they should be having like a little trust fund together from now. They're supposed to get it started. This Everyone's is talking, but they still ain't stepping up. Because we're lacking the thing we need, true love and unity. Mm. There's still that distance between ones to come together. Even when we're all facing the same problem, we cannot commune. We cannot come together. And we cannot be trustworthy of each other because of the ripple effect of these other negative force fields so it's a struggling battle and then you will say it should be able it should be possible but these simple little things are underliningly lingering in our lives subliminally that we cannot even fully trust each other like right. all these artists they should come together form some type of committee like you say some type of, you know. Yeah, drop off something every month into this thing. Exactly. The artists, you know, they have it here. They have they have this thing called the CARES Act. And um, as artists, if you have evidence of you being an artist, when the COVID went down or if there's something that happened where you're not working, you can apply and they'll see your application. Beyonce, Michael Jackson, all these people contribute to this thing. Truly, yeah. And I was like, when I found out about it, I was like, wow. And I'm like, you know what? They need that in reggae for some of all these other artists where, not to say you're going to take care of them forever, but, you know, if something was to happen to them, their family don't have to do a GoFundMe. They can dip off into that account to exactly. pay for the service because that's, it, that's their work. You know, that was their job. They were part of that community, and that community should be able to take care of them. Accessibility, yeah. Yeah, man, they should just do that. That's crazy. So, okay, let's go back to you now. Um, as far as um, artists performing with like collabs, like 
Is there any artists that you want to collab with that you haven't? And who are some of the artists that you collabed with already? Well, most of the things and most of the work I've done with artists in the past, um, or musician messengers, I prefer to call them, came through the mystics. Um, I do not outwardly have anyone particular in mind that I want to collab with, but I know there's great potential out there with artists that are musician or messengers that are on the same frequency like I am, that if it is aligned and meant to be by the grace and you know mercies of the Almighty, that it will happen. And this I've seen displayed itself or unfolded um, in the past when I also collaborated with a world-renowned artist such as Aki Becker. Hmm. Um, the moment uh, was right. That's um, Midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Well, okay. We do have a track together. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay yeah. now. Now so, that was a blessed situation. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he's no longer with us. You're part of that fraternity. Yeah, he's with us. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we're that blessed to be able to work with him. Truly, I'm just trying truly. to say that part. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I yeah, did a work with him. I did another work with a brother of mine from Brooklyn called Bigger Haitian. Okay. I did a work with a virgin of mine, brother of mine, Mobile Malaki. Okay. okay. Um, from Belize as well, world renowned um, musician, vocalist. Um, did a work with um, my brother. Ja Art, who was oh, previously yeah, on your show. Yes. I also did a <laughs> Think work. of yourself, Ja Art. He, that energy to him, I love it. Oh. True. <laughs> I love his little energy because he got a message too. He, he, you know, he, he's got a, a, this, the way he comes about with his messages is like, he's like your homeboy. Like, you'd be sitting there and be like, you know what? Ja said, we go around the corner, riches will come like, and you'd be like, I'm going with him because the way he moved, it can't be wrong. You yeah, know, he has true, that energy. True. But you'd be like, yeah, yes, man. Uh, this, this is a frequency, <laughs> and this is why someone must connect because of that frequency. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even um, Nigos Aitz, um, Nigo, he I, was I here did too. a work yeah, yeah. with him as well. I actually have a track on his last album called Top Secret. Also, it's on this weekend, and you, you guys, if y'all tune in, this is. um. May the 5th and May the 7th, the grand opening of my sister friend. Her restaurant will be this Saturday, and Nico Heights is going to be performing. So you're going to come too. It's going to be a family reunion. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful <laughs> Yeah, okay. so, you know, these brothers of mine, I've, I've done work with, and, you know, in the future, like I said, whatever's supposed to unfold in the proper alignment of the stars. Are you in Belize now? You live in Belize? You live in Belize? No, now? I actually live in New York. Oh, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So. Okay, well, you guys need to link up again, definitely. You yeah. guys need to put something on together. Like, you know, we, look at me, I'm going to go into it. You, if we all could have had a meeting, we could have did something in here. Exactly. <laughs> and that's that's the thing, because Nigas, ah. Nigas and I were speaking two weeks a go about oh, no. working Let and going somewhere. Let me go back to this interview, because I'm mad at y'all now. <laughs> But you see, the thing is, we, I, I was not aware on, you know, there's so much thing going on at the same yeah. time on, on we, each other. Yeah, that's so. actually my good friend. She, That's her cousin. And she was like, you know what, I'm going to have my cousin come. And he's available to come and, you know, work it out and everything. But I was like, dang, if he could come that easy, I'm going to be like, wait, you know what? We, Truly. Yeah. You know? Because that's the, okay, we're on that. That, that energy, Truly. you know, it's so crazy because... As much as a lot of things is going on, when you do say positive things going on, this is positive energy going on here, it, people be like, you know what? Because they know they because need it too. Exactly. Like I said, vacation, everybody it. longs for it. Long the for mind it. itself is something that wants it, even wants though it. they get a lot of trash or garbage to swallow in the mind. It's something that if they are just closer to that message, they will be one. in tune. Let me listen. We're here. This is Lady Be the Music, Nick, you guys. So we're here with John Miracle from um, Belize, but he lives in New York, but <laughs> Belize is a recording artist. And um, I just want to say that I had run into a girl the other day, and she was saying that some of the things that I had been doing, she hadn't came out because she would always end up being busy, but that a lot of the, the um, 
culture music and the band and all these things was like inspiring her and she'd go to my page for these kind of energies and I was like, why don't you just come out and you know, break the spell? Yeah. Just come in and get in the place then if it's so because the energy she was giving me while she was telling me, I'm looking at her like she's so excited. And I was like, why don't you make yourself present? Exactly. And she's like, you know what, I am. And I'm like, it took for you to just see me and whatever, like, you need a personal invite? And I was like, that's what I do when I share the flyer. And I say, I'm going to be here. This is what's going on. I'm personally opening door for everybody to know. True. This vibe is happening here in L.A. And it's here for you to come and get some if you want it. You know? True. So yeah. It's more than experience it. Yes. Connect. That's the energy. Okay, so now, as far as female artists, what's up? You have any collabs though? Yeah, I did a few collabs, quite a few. Um, I didn't hear no female voices <coughs> playing. Um, <laughs> I mean, not the names. I I mean. I've, I've done a few um, collabs with, um, I did two collabs with a sister in girl, um, Kim Pommel from all of Jamaica. She oh, does. Yes, she. Tell Kim to give me your vibes. Yeah, she used to, her, uh, you know, um, Toots, um, he passed away, but she was also a part of those backup singers. So she, okay. she have experience out there. Her name is Kim Pommel. We did a track called I Need You Now um, on a reggae track out of Portugal via the Lion Music. Also did a um, piece with a sister in called. Uh, Betty Jo, from California itself, somewhere out there in the mountains. Um, that was more on a rap rhythm. Um, did another track, which is to be released on an album in July with a sister from South Africa called Empress Naphtali. Um, I have so much work out there sometimes to like recall well, look, all I the things. Well, I saw that he really, be, you know, because it said you had like a... I think over hundred songs or something. I said, I was like, wow, okay, you, yeah. you really, I mean, albums, I think it said album. Yeah, I have like maybe seven or eight albums on the web and like about the individual 200 songs. songs. Yeah, yeah. 200 songs. that's what I'm saying. But it was kind of different album for the song, but I was like, you have a True. lot of work. So how many different places have you ever, have you performed? California, you know, New York? Yeah, um, we did. Different states. We did quite a few work in New York um, over the years. Um, did quite a few work in California over the time. Too. I know he was here, you guys. If y'all didn't know, LA Massive, he was the artist performing. What was it right before the COVID? I guess the last. Um, I think was that it was the twenty twenty, I believe. Yeah, the Belizean. The Belizean uh, Independence. He was here for that. It was a good, you know. A good show. I have performed Big Up Yourself, Little Belize with the uh, um, Peace of Paradise band. I, Peace of Paradise band, I have performed with them too in that same show. So I was on that show with okay. you. <laughs> earlier, before you guys had came, we had went on earlier. Okay. But I was looking, I was like, that's the same guy I know that performed that night. You came up there with the energy too. Big voice. Big sure. voice. <laughs> Just Big voice, okay? <laughs> and then Nico came right behind you. Was, it was you guys did good, yeah. and y'all came. And let me tell you too, and you represent. You guys came with your artist vibrations. True. You came and delivered the message. It was like even Nico too. I was saying like, um, like an artist like when you serious and you trying to share with the people. If that's what it is, you gotta come like that. You know, if that's what you want to yeah. do, you got to come like that. Because remember, sometimes your friends and your family, you're doing it in a way they ain't going to tell you. They just take it because, you know, that's your people. But when you come in and you deliver to strangers, if that's what you say you want to do, you got to come like, come. Effective. And yeah. you came exactly. You got, and I was like, look at them, you know, because I've been paying attention to all, I'm into all of those vibes. So I'm like, listen to the message. I'm watching the energy. So when you're stopping, you talk to the people. So when you go back to your thing. Truly. And y'all both, your voice, your voice, I remember, was big, 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 big. So if a person was not paying attention, your voice made you turn around and be like, let me see what's going here. Truly. <laughs> it was big. So yes, you guys did great with that part. Truly, definitely. Truly, truly. Did a couple works also with um, with Nigos um, live set um, in Chicago as well. Just yeah, oh yeah, the Chicago thing. Yeah, I remember yeah. I did see. I sure. think right after that, it was a Chicago show or something like right. 
No yeah. Mother's Day event. There was yeah. one on a Mother's Day event. Then the, the year after, then we also had one in, for the Park Fest or something at the Caribbean there or something. So, yeah. How was that for you guys being the Belizean artists to be like rubbing shoulders with the Jamaican artists? You know, singing reggae music. Like, well, yeah, how so did they it's, receive it's, you? Like, the thing is about this culture of music, it doesn't have barriers and it doesn't have territorial reign. Okay. When I say so, I mean like, yes, we know Jamaica is one of the backbone or mm -hmm. one of the carriers of mm -hmm. the culture and the roots, or if we may say in the Caribbean, the official founders, if uh -huh. we may use that term. Mm -hmm. I think it goes all the way, far way back to Africa and, you know, the, the, the sound change in time. However, you know, it doesn't have barriers. It, it, it doesn't separate you from, because the message is the key thing. What we have to say, the substance that ha that needs to be propelled or pronounced to the ears is in the same basket. Right. So for me, or for I, when I go places, I do not like see the difference. You know, I do not look to see, you know. I know this is like, it's just to do the work. A little, because of the the commitment. True. And being true to the thing. You know what I'm saying? That I know that I'm sure that some people be like, because you're solid. Truly. When you're solid, you, they can't, you know, Truly. never take it. Yeah, you know <laughs> that's the thing about And it. some people will go around and trying to get in the side gate. And you walk through, you know. Truly, truly. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> You're right. I know. That. I'm just thinking about seeing some artists, like when they look and they see it, they're like, okay. And they have to say, yo, when I'm going on with a thing, like, yes, like, yeah, I have to take it. But it's like, that's the energy that was with you. Are true. you going to have? If you're standing, you know what I mean? True. So, but we got to have it, though. So yeah. it's thankful that you're there. You, you got to get I mean? rid of them butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now, like, so you got any upcoming shows going on right now? Yeah, well, we have some things planning up. Um, New York City. Um, well, on your behalf, a few days from now, a few hours from now, might also be doing some work oh, yes. uh, with a couple of set down. I mean, that's just to speak on that. Yeah, yes. but I have some other stuff. You that, guys want uh, to see him this weekend. Truly, <laughs> represented okay. firmly. Yeah. Yeah. Some other works are in the pipeline that are we're trying to you know get together, um, at least a six state tour. Yeah. I did some work recently in Florida, two shows in Florida, and a brethren of mine booked me for a show out there in July as well. So I should be going back to Florida in July. And I'm getting a request for to work with another band or a band also. Um, the Blaze It Posse Band mm -hmm. um, in Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale. So there's certain yeah, things that are coming. Yeah, they're uh, coming because you know in this time, like all with all the stuff that happened, everybody need a positive. You know, yeah. Even yeah. though they have the music to turn up out there, but after a few minutes of they dancing, they get tired and they stand there. They need some, it's gonna be all right. Truly. They need some, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To revive them. They, they need it right now. Everybody need it. Like when we first started doing things and that that positive, you need it. Coming from this, everybody need it. So sky is the limit for the good so good things to step out truly. from this COVID, I believe. True, you know, true, true. Really, if everybody just really just open their eyes to everything, you know what I mean? And just don't act like it didn't happen. I don't pay attention to it. You know, it's a need. It's yeah. a need, you know. So bring the people a refresh. A refresh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So what is like one of your favorite songs from your, your catalog of music? Um, one of the songs that I sing more prominently is "Lead the Way," the one which is featuring Aki Becker. Okay. Um, based upon the fact that it has a very potent um, body has a potent delivery and if people especially with Akibeka verse in there to seal it up uh, put the you know lid on there it, it opens the eyes of the nations um, to know who is the Almighty um, beyond just belief and beyond religion so 
that is one of the tracks then that I focus on heavily when I go places because with this particular track I can elaborate and I can diverge while delivering it to places of importance that the people need to examine or to take a view of through words so yeah lead the way lead the way yeah I like I also I, I, I can't favor none of the other, none from the other really but because that has a certain current with it. What you feel too when you pour. Yeah. Yeah. Pours and the Yeah, look at the like, I didn't hear the song that I can only imagine. I'm glad to be connected on these things. I understand what you're saying. That true. one that be working on you while it's working with everybody else. I'm truly, truly, truly. <laughs> exactly. That, that's beautiful. So you guys didn't get a chance to do a video for it, huh? We do have a lyrical video out there, but it was not an official video video. Oh, okay, okay. I can make out the time was always busy yeah. and always traveling, so yeah. it would have been very, very... I tried to make it happen, um, but it was unfortunate that it, you know, it was not able to, you know, come true. Okay, you guys, Lady B here at the Music Link, and we're here with John Miracle, you guys, recording artist from Belize. Ooh, no, I didn't. Recording artists from Belize. Um, what I wanted to ask you is that um, um, the shows that you did, like, is there any other names that you opened for, like shows where you were like, you know, shocked to be on with other big name artists? Yeah, I did a few shows um, with other artists, uh, places as well. I worked with um, what's his name, um, Loot and Fire. Okay. Um, work with um one of my early early days performance was on a stage with um cableton you know in the early early 2000s as well i did a show um in manhattan harlem at the black theater um also when budget banton was also a resident in new york he had a show in that same particular arena we did a work there as well what you say that we moving too quick now the man that said he was on the show with... With Kimata and Bojabanta. What? Yeah. Bojabanta at the time, you know, had a, 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 a dance or a show um, in the Black Theater in Harlem off 125th Street and Madison. And we, um, I actually got the opportunity to, with a brother of mine called Sherman Zebelan. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, um, we used to call him Sherlock. I'm not sure, like, um, I can't even remember that particular name, okay. but yeah, he, he and I actually opened that, um, did a part of the presentation for the opening, because it was several artists um, who opened the show for him. Um, did a show with Determined, also in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, you know, you see, this is the thing that, even when we're doing the music and you're reaching for stars and you want things to happen, the steps that you take sometimes are so amazing too, even money wise can't even Exactly. You know, it's your walk and it's your story. But to put you in that place that means that you your works are, are moving in levels. Exactly. You know, because you just can't go and be like, I have a song, can I um open up for such and such? True. For you to get in permit in position, that means that something is going good over there. You got true, something true. that's, you know, true. it's set away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And sometimes even with us doing our things, if you start feeling doubtful or whatever, you have to remember, you know, where there's something set away where I was able to, because there's so many people still that haven't even have a, have a track yet or have recorded their voices yet who are still aspiring to, true. you Let's know, share. even touch one microphone and you over here opening it up for Bucci, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know? That's the part where I be so, like, you know, it's so crazy. We don't be, you know, we have to take all those things in, you know? And that's so beautiful. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's foot, foot sprint, footprints and, yes. you know, legacies, if Legacy. I may say, mm -hmm. you know, that boost you for the next step. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's important that we keep these records, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it's a video, if it's, yeah, something. Yeah, to the record, the same. The and sometimes if we don't have that record, that's for us. But it's it, it's for you too, to let you know what's going on with you when you 
True. I have a friend that, you know, he was the first re reggae recording artist, um, Junior P, Big Up Yourself, on Capitol Records. And now he's in Jamaica and he's chilling. He's like trying to do this and that. I was like, you don't forget who you are. I was like, it should be outside your house. It should be outside your gate, okay? You're the first reggae recording artist on Capitol Records here in Los Angeles. That's one of the major record companies. And you were the first recorded reggae recording artist that they signed. Back then, you didn't like, um, like how people are promoting themselves right now. No, 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 no. They came and they found you. Truly. So don't fall off from who you are. That's the thing. And <laughs> you know, I realized that there comes a time in many artists or messengers' life where it seems like, and it's a term they use, artist blockage. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't think they're short of what to say or what they might want to say. But something comes there that blocks the vision. Mm -hmm. And to maintain the momentum becomes excruciatingly, you know, hard. Yeah. For, for, for some and this comes with another load I think it's when we if in, 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 in our lives let's say this if we're to bring message to uplift and encourage the people and educate the people of what's going on there's so much going on consistently right. that there's nothing there that should be short of expression right. so if we focus on putting out the needed message, there will never be a lack of message. Okay. You see? Listen here, this is John Miracle up in here. Yeah? <laughs> Boy, you better preach. <laughs> no, I just said that because that's true. That's true. The power in your words, you go for it. True. That's Give what that. I'm saying. That's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's all on the table. If we, it's, it's like a chess game again in every move, in every, every motion of life. You know, everything is laid right before you. It's before our very eyes. If we sit down and critically analyze these things and overstand where we, our purpose, sorry, and where we want to go with what we're endeavoring for, yeah. then we will be able to, you know, put the piece of the puzzle together and show the world. And what will be for us will be for us. Exactly. Right. That's the key thing. Lady be here again, you guys, John Miracle. I want you to share with us. Um, you know, I want you to give the people a little piece of the magic with true, this big true, old true. voice, you know. Yeah, man, for all you powerful people right now inside the music link with Lady B Locks, hopefully and bright. Ah, and you know this is the Oracle John Miracle. Mother's Day, all you beautiful mothers. I do pray that you have a wonderful day to come. And even now, in this time, in this moment, your days are actually bountifully wonderful. Mama, I love you. Mama, I love you. Listen why. Three scores and ten and ten and ten more. Grandmama took the long narrow lane, she never made no turn. Steadfast in her principles and disciplinary teachings. It's an honorable acknowledgement of high adolescence upbringings. All these lessons was well learned, your instructions, I hope keep them. Mama taught us to love even when stern kept us close to her bosom. Oh, shall I forget to give thanks and praise unto the Most High? For carrying us safely in and out these rough times. Mama say faith is the evidence of things not seen. Humbleness, grace, and faith is the haste that needle that's not seen. Even when it was thick or thin, Grandma say we have been bare and green. Mama, I love you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mama, I love you. Hold on. Grandmama say one day belly full, now fat in no one. Enough is good as a feast, but to the greedy it is done. The bitter truth, things easily said, but seldomly done. Be careful of the flittering, flattering lips and the fabricated fast tongue. 
He that thinks he know it all proves to know not a fact. Life of a natural path, don't put the carriage before the house. It is easier to live life humble and simple than to be a empty barrel or a bulging rolling vessel. It is easier to live life humble and simple. How can a camel enter the eye of a needle? These are the teachings of my mama, 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 mama. These are the proceedings of my mama. Mama, I love you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mama, I love you. For all you beautiful ladies, for all you beautiful mothers out there, keep upholding the principles, the rudiments, the teachings, the laws. Do not spear the rod and spoil the child. Bring the children up in the right way. Praise this be. Give thanks. Yes, give, give thanks. Y'all hear that big old voice? I told y'all. <laughs> and he, he was working it all the way through because you, you can hear how big it is. And he's over here. He's got it trained, okay? True, true. <laughs> I'm telling you, big old voice. To bring it up, down, smooth it out, stretch it. Big voice. Okay, can you um, tell them all where to find you, all your social media handles? Truly, truly, truly. Um, worldwide, worldwide platforms, um, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Dreezer, Africa Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, YouTube. Amen. The name is Ja Miracle and it's spelled intricately. J-A-H-M-Y-H-R-A-K-L-E. Mer, you know the mer, the mystics of the mer. Yeah, miracle. So miracle. Okay. <laughs> we put a spin on the spell because, you know, in the industry, you might have ones that take the common spelling. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to have no problems with our you know, established okay. name. That so. part. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. You know what I'm saying? I do give it's thanks for vibration. being here with you, Lady Lux, uh, B Lux, I should say, on the music link yes. of Philip Bright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. This is Lady B again here sharing another um, beautiful experience with another beautiful artist that's out here sharing and doing great and positive things, making sure he's pushing the positive um, message to you guys. So whenever you're feeling low and, and think that things are not going right, just know that there's another soul out here that's reaching for the beautiful stars. True. And that's John Miracle here, you guys, from Belize, recording artist, reggae music. Right? Truly. We thank you so much, Lady B, the music link, and we'll be out. Hey, you guys go to the music link, like and subscribe to my page, you guys. I'm just holding a vibration. You see what's happening here. Just good vibes all the way. And to check out the other interviews, just like me. You'll see when it's coming up. You know, you know how the thing go. Support the platform. You know what's up. Truly. Lady B and I'm out. Thank you, darling. Bless the love. All right. <laughs> <laughs>